Hello and welcome to my review of the Sisters of Battle Seraphim Squad. One of these box sets will cost you £32.50, which is a whole £5 more than the Space Marine Assault Squad, which has five Marines in, and it's £10 more than the Chaos Space Marine Raptor box set, which again has five Marines. And incidentally, that has nine more components as well for £10 less. And this set is also £15 more expensive than the Orc Storm Boys set. However, that comparison isn't really fair because there's a lot fewer parts in that set. But still, nice to draw some comparisons with the other jump pack, uh, fast attack, assault units from other armies. Now, is this set worth it? Well, that's really the whole point of all my reviews, to establish whether it is worth it. As I said in my Zephyrim box set review, this is a classic example of Games Workshop producing a, a box set whereby they could have produced two separate ones, um, the Seraphim as its own box set and the Zephyrim as its, its other box set. Maybe it costs them double to do that, and uh, this is a cheaper way because this set still has three sprues. And um, so you're talking about £10 a sprue, which is not too bad. But I feel like if you're just making the Seraphim, you are getting a bit short changed. For instance, rules wise, you can only have uh, two of the uh, sisters with the dual um, wielding pistols, of which you do get enough uh, to create um, two of them with the pan flamers and two of them with the inferno pistols you know the the small uh, melter pistols in a way it's just you get so many spare parts um what they've done is they've duplicated the uh, jet packs which are bigger uh, for the zephyrim the zephyrim actually have five uh, thrusters coming out of their jet packs and uh, the seraphim only have four uh, their jet packs are a bit more ornate and so are their helmets. I think if this set was £25 for five Zephyrim, as built as I built them, then yeah, I think that that's worth it. But at £32.50, it uh, is quite a high asking price just for five miniatures at the end of the day. I think Games Workshop were pushing it a bit with the, the you know, the... They released the, the intercessors as combat squads, I think, um, for a short while. I, th I think they were like £25 a, a pop, um, which was quite pricey. And like I said before, we are technically getting five assault models in other kits uh, for uh, a fair bit cheaper uh, than, than this box set. Yes, I understand it's a dual kit, but what you're left with, unfortunately, with most of these dual kits is... Uh, half of the parts unusable. It's gonna be quite difficult to use those uh, jetpacks on any of your other Sisters of Battle models, just because of the way their legs and their arms are kind of um, positioned. You try strapping one of these assault packs on uh, those and it, you really can tell that they're not meant to be on them. Unlike Space Marines, which Games Workshop have available the separate jump packs and you can pretty much put those uh, jump packs on any Space Marine. Um, so it would have been nice if they if they continued that with the Sisters of Battle range, uh, so that it, you were able to um, mix and match uh, more of their parts. But like I say, if you build the Zephyrim um, out of this box set, you're gonna be quite happy. But if you build the Seraphim, you may not um, feel like you got your, your full sort of £32.50. Anyway, enough about the price and things. Let's have a look at the models themselves because they are gorgeous. Unfortunately, they're going to be in exactly the same leg poses as your Zephyrim, if that is uh, much of an issue. So we'll start off with the Sister Superior or the Seraphim Superior, uh, this one right here. All these poses are, you know, works in progress. I, I will glue them to the base, especially that one. She looks like she's you know, having a whale of a time. Anyway, let's have a little zoom in to these ladies. And uh, so, yeah, this is the uh, Seraphim uh, Superior. Uh, I've armed her with the plasma pistol and the chain sword. I was thinking about using the power sword, uh, but um, I really like the chain sword. And um, the power sword uh, that it comes with is exactly the same one as I used in the Zephyrim squad. So I didn't really want 
uh, another kind of superior in exactly the same pose as a Zephyrin. That's why I chose the same chain sword because uh, instead of holding it at a side sideways, um, she is sort of holding it along the spine. I want to say. Anyway, I picked the plasma pistol as well. Um, you've got various options. You can give her a bolt pistol or an inferno pistol, and so on and so on. Um, I've given her a hel helmet as well. Actually, I think all of my seraphim have helmets. Yeah, they do. <laughs> But yeah, plenty of detail, and they also have the same thing going on with their jetpacks, whereby you can only put this um, part on this uh, jetpack, because it's got the different shapes and sockets uh, for each one. Anyway, yeah, they look a bit bland looking, I want to say, uh, you know, compared to the Zephyrim, but then again, the Zephyrim are, you know, the elite, elite choice, elite version. So then we've got this one. Lovely little pose. I think she's either just lifted off or touching down and hammering the foe with those uh, bolt pistols. Uh, this is what I think of Seraphim. Um, well, I also think of them with hand flamers too, but uh, yeah, just, um, you know, no close combat weapons at all, just grenades and bolt pistols. Uh, getting in close and uh, pistol whipping enemies. The armor is stunning though, as you can see. There's lots of 3D detail. Um, that must have been very difficult to sort of uh, get right. And then this one, which is in the do sort of dodgy pose. <laughs> this sister is equipped with these uh, hand flamers. I think they look really cool. Um, just uh, bathing the enemy in, in flames. Uh, this sister has got one of those weird cloak things with the, you know, this extra part that does get in the way and it does get in the way of uh, attaching it to the, to the base. Um, Oh God. This one is, yeah, probably one of my least favorite poses, sort of. I don't like the angle of the right uh, pistol, but the left one's okay. She's just going about um, taking aim because the, the arm itself isn't locked sh straight and that one's at a bit of a strange angle, like the weight of the bolt pistol is, is weighing her, her wrist down. I just, yeah, not a big fan of that one. I like both the grenades that are um, being affected by uh, her speed though, that's that's quite cool. They're flailing about. You don't really see that often on the models, uh, the effect of physics on on grenades of these uh, miniatures. Come on. Yes. The Emperor balances. Okay. Um, and then you've got this one with the Inferno pistols. Uh, popping tanks, popping terminators. Um, very, very close range though, these things. I think they're what, like six inches or so. So you have to be very close to melt faces. Um, yeah, this bit probably is a bit fragile. Don't actually know what it's supposed to be. It's just a bit of rope or something. That's what it shows on the box. I don't think it's needed. I don't think we needed that rope thing there at all. I think if if she didn't have anything there, that'd be fine. I might clip it off and put a purity seal on. We'll see if it bugs me enough. I think it is starting to bug me now though, now that I've seen it. Okay, so that is all. So they are all of the models. What I'll do now is I will show you the spare parts and then I'll do some comparisons, specifically with the Sisters of Battle army set. You do get five Seraphims in that uh, big army box set and I'll also show you some comparisons with um, Saint Celestine of course and uh, the Xerophim models. So first of all let's have a look at these spare parts. No, no! Yeah I, I think it's best if I put them back on because otherwise some people may complain. So uh, oddly enough I did get a spare 32 mil base, I don't know why I just did. Uh, in that um, box set, that, that was an odd one. Uh, you do get six flying stands, um, three sets of the same height. So, you know, two sets of, of this height, two sets of a, a bit smaller, and two sets of the smallest ones. Um, clearly I've chosen two of the tallest. Maybe that one's the tallest and then those two are the same. I don't know, I think those two are the same and those two are the same. Uh, maybe that's the tallest one. Either way, I've got one left over. Uh, and then these are all the spare parts. Look at these guys. Wow. 
This is what happens when you get a, a dual kit. Of course, I've got this uh, big banner thing called a Zephyrim pennant. Um, it's a Zephyrim pennant, not a Seraphim pennant, so no point in me putting that on them. You can do if you want, um, but yeah, people probably think you've got Zephyrim uh, having that pennant on there. So that's quite a nice banner though. Uh, you could probably use it with, a, with another squad maybe. Um, then you've got all of the five uh, Zephyrim jetpacks. This is what I mean with the different plugs and sockets and things, different uh, back panels for the, for the jetpacks. And there's five of them. And then this is the, the power sword, quite a nice power sword. It's reminiscent actually of a relic blade. Uh, it's quite thin um, and, and long compared to a power, power sword. I mean, here is a power sword. Here's a power sword that I didn't use. So there you go. And then um, you've also got these little order icons, which I didn't use. I mean, nothing stopping you from putting one on the um, uh, Sister Superior, I guess. And then I've got uh, the rest of the power swords from the uh, Zephyrin box set. You get a few purity seals that you can dot about them. Uh, you get the, the dove with the, the scroll that I used on the uh, Zephyrin uh, squad. You get the brazier that goes on the top of the pennant. Uh, you get some bolt pistol uh, holders, uh, little books, the flamers. Uh, you know, like I said at the start, you get enough to make two seraphim with the inferno pistols and two seraphim with the hand flamers. So if you want to keep the, the squad uniformed, you can have the squad dedicated for tank popping, or you can have the squad dedicated for, for flaming your enemies. Um, and then you get all the, the helmets from the Zephyrim, the spiky helmets, they look really cool. Uh, nice for Games Workshop to include both um, helmetless heads and helmeted heads, and specific helmets for specific jump packs. It would be nice to see Forge World doing that. Big tip there, uh, specifically for the Venatari, uh, because they only included three heads and didn't have helmeted options, which really, really sucked, uh, especially at the, at the price point. Anyway, you, you get more order icons and you get uh, this sister uh, superior with the with the hood up, which they've used on the, the box art. Um, you know, they've, they've got more sisters without helmets on that box art than, than with. Um, and then, you know, looking at the back, uh, it's a bit of a, a bit, a bit of a, a bit of a bit more of a balance there then clearly shows you the, uh, Zephyrim squad on the back, which leads me on to my size comparisons. Talking about the spare parts, clearly, you know, if it was a single kit and it was 25 pound, um, you wouldn't have that many, uh, leftovers, uh, if it was just a Seraphim, um, box set. And I don't know about you guys. But I would have personally would have rather have paid fifty pounds for two individual units sets than the sixty-five pounds because that's where they're getting you at the moment. In that uh, dual kits sound good, but they're cheaper for them to manufacture because it's only three sprues at the end of the day instead of six unique ones or four unique ones. You happen to spend double that that high price point. You know, if you could buy two of these for fifty pound. Clearly that's, that's way better than the um, 65 pounds. Um, you know, if you look at it that way, it's 65 pounds for 10 assault models, which is, which is Forge World prices, let's face it. Anyway, enough about that. Let's have a look at uh, them compared to the Seraphim in the uh, box set. Okay, I've brought them over here. They're just having a little rest. Um, but if you look at the, Superior. The Superior didn't come with a, a helmet. She came helmetless. She's got the plasma pistol, same as my one, but she has this nice power sword. She's in a lovely pose. Got the purity seal, plenty of detail. Just doesn't have the purity seals flowing off of the back of the um, jetpack. If you look at this one, this one again doesn't have a, a helmet, but is in a, a lovely pose. Um, this pose actually, in my opinion, is better than all of the poses in the, the individual set. Um, however, she is duplicated with her helmeted um, sister. So that's, you know, one of the downsides in this army set is 
uh, you get two sets of twins uh, and that's reflected in the other uh, pose which I'm not a huge fan of um, you know there are better poses in the, the individual kit uh, but this one is with the helmeted uh, one as well it's as poor, poorest pose I, in, in my opinion um, but I do like the superior even though she hasn't got a helmet on and I do like uh, this pose um, from the army set so all in all I'd give this round to the uh, the individual Seraphim uh, box set. Uh, there's a lot more customization. With the army set, you only get the plasma pistol and the power sword, nothing else. You don't even get one of them with, with the hand flamers or the inferno pistols. So there's much more customization, but you are paying that, that premium uh, for that customization in the Seraphim uh, uh, box set. Now, comparing them to the Gemini Superior and uh, Saint Celestine, because it's gonna be awesome when I have all the, the 15 flying sisters uh, milling about uh, these two. Um, as you can see, the a Gemini Superior have a, a modified version of the Seraphim jump pack in that they have five thrusters on each side of the, the jet pack, so 10 in total, um, compared to just the, um, the eight in total of the normal Seraphim. Uh, the Zephyrim, they do have the same number of, uh, of thrusters. Uh, so that's a nice little touch. I like how um, Games Workshop really thought ahead with uh, with the Gemini Superior quite a few years ago. Gave them as many thrusters as, as possible, and that's pretty cool. Or maybe they thought backwards and decided to give the Seraphim a less. Anyway, that's sort of like a little comparison and size comparison with um, the models from the army set and the Saint Celestine. Uh, this is obviously one of the um, Zephyrim, and you can see just how extravagant and I say pompous you know just just extravagant and uh, you know crazy the the Zephyrim are compared to the Seraphim they they make the Seraphim look so vanilla and yeah technically they are I mean the Zephyrim are way way better you know they've all got the power swords and the bolt pistols they're just incredible although you will have the legs and the torso is in exactly the same poses. Uh, the only thing that's going to change, which does make a considerable difference, is the uh, jetpacks, the power swords, and the helmets. Um, they're the main, main differences between uh, these two uh, units. So that's the Zephyrim. I've just got a Canon S there, and uh, that's my, my Canon S, um, just for like a little size comparison. And then where they measure up, next to a, a penitent engine this time. They are a little bit shorter than a penitent engine, uh, height-wise, even on the tallest bases. And then next to the big, big daddy there, the Exorcist tank, um, they are way, way uh, shorter than that, um, than the uh, tallest vehicle that sisters have. And just the final size comparison that I li always like to make is just with a couple of Space Marines. Normal Space Marine on the left, a Legacy one, and then a Primaris on the right. Uh, if we just pop one off of her base, gives you an idea there. She is, I wanna say, similar height, just a lot less bulky, uh, a lot less mass going on. And then compared to a Primaris, yeah, she is, yeah, a fair bit shorter than a Primaris and a lot less, and a lot less bulky, even more so. Um, than a Primaris. So that's where they stack up with, uh, you know, the, the Space Marines. So this is my part of the review where I will go through all of their rules. You'll find them in your brand new Sisters of Battle Codex, tucked away in the fast attack section. There are only two options for fast attack for uh, Sisters of Battle. I kind of wish that there should be a third or fourth, uh, maybe some kind of fast attack vehicle, some kind of, extravagant uh, land speeder type vehicle with sails on and torches and you know but but with these wings on it something along those lines at least anyway so they share the uh, fast attack section with the dominion squad which i do always question whether they should be uh, fast attack uh, with the same movement speed as um, the other 
sisters of battle with every other sister of battle anyway moving on then so for the true uh, fast attack choice the seraphim squad uh, they are a power points cost of a four and a points cost of 11 points per model uh, to put it that in perspective they are two points per model more expensive than a normal battle sister and two points cheaper than a uh, zephyrim uh, sister so they are in the middle of the the cheapest uh, sister and the uh, the most expensive so what do you get for all these points then well uh, they are a movement speed of 12 inches uh, which is exactly the same speed as the uh, zephyrim squad that have uh, those two extra thrusters <laughs> on their jetpack and um, they are a weapon skill of three plus the ballistic skill of three plus strength three toughness three one wound one attack leadership seven and a save of three plus the superior has exactly the same stat line except she has two attacks instead of one and a leadership of eight how does that stack up with the Xerophim squad? Well, the Xerophim squad have one more attack and they have one more leadership and that's the same for the superior. Uh, it would have been nice to see the Zephyrim have that weapon skill of uh, two plus. That would really set them apart, but anyway. So this unit contains one Seraphim superior and four Seraphim. It can additionally contain up to five Seraphim power rating of plus three every model is equipped with two bolt pistols frag grenades and crack grenades so you can have 10 in the squad which will definitely increase its survivability so they're equipped with the bolt pistols which just work as usual you've got options there for hand flamers inferno pistols plasma pistol chainsaw power sword for their war gear options up to two seraphim can be equipped with one of the following instead of two bolt pistols uh, two hand flamers two inferno pistols so you can have two of them in the five or four of them in the ten equipped with uh, these little special pistols and um, the hand flamer is very short range it's only six inches it's a pistol d6 strength three ap0 and damage one uh, and when you resolve an attack made with the weapon uh, you don't make any hit rolls it automatically scores a hit that's all right but it is very poor strength at strength three that's worse than the bolt pistol the best thing about it is it can have a number of shots with the with the d6 and it's also nice that it uh, automatically hits the Inferno pistol is like a little melter pistol. Uh, that's same range, it's a six inch range. It's only one shot, so pistol one. Strength eight though, AP minus four, and damage D6. And when resolving an attack made with this weapon against a unit that is within half range, so that would be three inches. Roll two D6 when inflicting damage with it and discard one of the results. Now that's quite nice, but again, it's very short range. But to have two of them equipped with the four Inferno pistols would be nice because then you're getting four strength eight AP minus four shots, quite tasty. The Seraphim Superior can be equipped with one of the following instead of one bolt pistol, uh, one chain sword, one power sword. Uh, the Seraphim Superior can be equipped with one plasma pistol instead of one bolt pistol. So clearly my Superior has swapped one of her bolt pistols uh, with the chain sword and the other bolt pistol with the plasma pistol. That's a nice little trade off. Um, and it allows her to additional attack, so she's getting three attacks. The other Seraphim Superior has that power sword anyway, so for me I wanted to showcase the, the chain sword on, on the model. So their abilities, Acts of Faith, Sacred Rites and Shield of Faith, so they're getting that invulnerable 6 plus save. Angelic Visage, this is an ability that they share with the Zephyrim squad. Uh, the invulnerable save uh, models in this unit received from the Shield of Faith ability is improved by one to a maximum of four plus. That's brilliant. So now they're getting that um, invulnerable save of a five plus. So three plus normal, five plus invulnerable. Uh, and then Sky Strike. Same ability as the Zephyrin. Uh, during deployment, you can set up this unit in the sky instead of setting it up on the battlefield. If you do at the end of your movement phases, you can set up this unit anywhere on the battlefield that is more than nine inches away from any enemy models. So deep strike basically. Keywords, Imperium, Adeptus Ministorum, Adeptus Sororitas, Infantry, Jump Pack, Fly, Seraphim Squad. So there you go. I, I would have liked to have seen an extra ability, but I am being a bit greedy. I think the fact that they can just bump up their invulnerable save uh, is very decent. You know, the Seraphim Squad, are worth the extra two points per model because um, you're getting those those rapturous uh, blows and you're getting that Zephyrim uh, pennant. You're getting more attacks. 
you're just missing out on uh, being able to have them with you know four hand flamers or four melter pistols so it really depends on what other elites you've got because uh, the Sisters of Battle Elite section is, is the most hotly contested section in the army and you may well have picked other uh, units to fill that hole. Whereas the Seraphim uh, are fast attack and uh, it really only depends if you've picked the Dominion squad over them. Um, but they are a nice, I say little unit. Uh, I don't know whether I'd run them with five. I think that they are a bit of a target. They can move quite fast at 12 inches, um, but they have to be so, so close uh, to, to cause any damage. And then the damage that they can cause is questionable. Um, you're really only getting them for the uh, superior's plasma pistol and possibly power sword, and those two seraphim that have the Inferno pistols or hand flamers. That, that is the main reason you're getting them for, and you just hope hope that they survive because they're not going to be very good in combat. They're very squishy. Uh, they're not very strong. They're not really. They have, they have a low toughness as well. They have hardly any attacks. Uh, you want to be um, getting up close with the Inferno pistols and the hand flamers, and then flying the hell out of there. <laughs> that would be my tactics with them. Anyway, what do you guys think? Uh, are they a must in your Sisters of Battle army just for the rule of cool? Because they do look bloody awesome. Um, please do put your thoughts and opinions down below as always. Uh, it'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.